the next session is a lightning talk by M. Bison. Um, the title is up there on the screen. It's Targeted User Analytics and Human Honeypots. It's a research project, and because we're tight on time with this one, I will hand immediately over and let you introduce yourself. Your shot. Yeah. I've got to take this shot. I'm not one much for Jaeger, but here it goes. <laughs> Oh, that was bad. You are. All right. So, my talk is targeted user, user analytics. Uh, I think you will find it interesting. I've, I've been busy trying to explore targeting processes that adversaries use, both APT and the less sophisticated adversaries, and how social media is leveraged. Or, um, and that, that was really the key driver of this. A little bit about me. I'm a beekeeper, as you'll see. I have a few strange hobbies. Uh, this is one of them. And uh, M. Bison is Rich Wickersham. You can follow me on Twitter. That's who I am. I didn't want to take a bunch of uh, the uh, attention prior to the talk, so that's why I waited until this time. Um, I've been in the field for almost 20 years. I've been conducting OSN since before we really had a name for it, I guess. Um, I've got a strong background up and down the stack uh, in security. I'm busy in cloud, chasing the misconfigurations that have keep, kept us all gamefully employed currently. Um, I really get a lot of enjoyment out of deconstructing adversary attack methods, so, uh, you know, I have my, my things that I like to do. Um, so, jumping into my talk, my hypothesis is that uh, our adversaries are using LinkedIn, we know this, um, to target our users. Uh, Data-driven targeting models can be built, and I built one. Um, targets can be externally enriched using breach data and other open source methods. And there is internal enrichment data that is only available to us to defend. And this is what, what we need to do. So I had to put a shirtless Vladimir Putin in here. This was for my amusement, and hopefully you find it funny. Uh, but users are still the weakest link, but it's only certain users. It's not everyone. It's those that have a large public footprint. Those of us and all of us in the room that have a large breach data set, uh, this is highly problematic. And also the behaviors that are demonstrated by those users. I call them habitual clickers, but you need to know who they are in your organization. If they map to your models uh, of systems you're trying to protect, you need to work against that. And the most important thing is the adversaries have every method and every type of data available to them. And as defenders, we, we can't use it all. This is a problem. Um, so targeted user analytics, the manual workflow. This is the thing that my whole deck tracks to. This is where I started um, this project. And this is what you can refer to after the fact to, to build your own um, basically uh, project along the lines of what I did. So I, I kicked this, this was in my backup slides, but I wanted to kick it up to the front uh, after chatting with a few people and, and just to show the due diligence that was done um, in terms of uh, the preconditions and legal pieces and what you can do and then the fact that I was unauthenticated when I, uh, I, I did any work against LinkedIn. I thought that was a, a key thing and we had a legal precedent for that. Um, and also, the, uh, the way I leveraged breach data was a pull from Have I Been Pwned. Um, hopefully, everybody's doing the same thing and assigning one or zeros to um, data sets that are available based on how I rated it. So the use case for generating my data was Swift. Um, I think that that's the that's largest uh, money-moving system in, in the world. I, I've been fortunate enough to have built out a Swift customer environment, and it was right at the time that the Bangladesh and uh, Vietnam incidents became public. So I got to look deep at those. I had a great headwind. I was able to really build a secure environment. Um, one of the things I ask when I build that environment or when I do anything is who has access to the system and more importantly, who do the adversaries know that has access to my SWIFT system? So if they know who to target, we've got a problem. So I went ahead and I foot footprinted my company and the results were were shitty, basically. Um, so the next question I asked were, well, how do, how do we look compared to the rest of the industry? So I did seven more. And the results were bad across the board. And, and uh, at the same time as this, I was, uh, I, I was working on a graduate paper at UVA, and I needed a topic. So I was like, well, why don't, why 
don't I build a conditional probability model for this? And uh, that's that's what I did. So a couple things about Swift. Swift is a, it is a secure platform. It's pretty pretty well built. Uh, it's been a lot of work done against it. But the customer implementations of Swift are not always good. Uh, we know this. And when you have a weak customer environment, it opens you to two attack vectors. One being uh, platform users that access the Alliance access to a web interface, for example, and the other being infrastructure administrators. If you've got root to the platform, um, then you can do some serious damage. And both user types have been targeted by adversaries, and we've seen this. Uh, and of course, I think they will be more successful in, but in, in companies with a lower security budget. The $50 firewalls are not gonna cut it. Um, and Swift realized this as well, so they built their customer security program. Um, and that was, that was a good move, I think. So seeds, uh, seeds, the seed files that I built are the keyword files. So I use the same methodology that a good recruiter would use. Um, I have a couple of friends that are recruiters. I have people trying to recruit me. I sort of get a feel for what they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, and in the case of this seed file, you wanted to identify a target with access to Swift. Um, a higher number of matches indicates a target that moves large amounts of money. So that's, that's the target acquisition that we're looking for. And these are the seeds. So utilizing the seeds. Utilizing the seeds actually creates more seeds, which is interesting. Uh, this is a simple query you can run in, in Google. So I've been told it's Google dorking, which I thought it was Google foo. That was funny. Um, and this is due to my lack of automation in building something simple here. So you can select uh, a Fortune 500, a Fortune 100, and run this search right now and see what you find. In a base, base model, um, five matches out of 32 uh, would be a successful basic match. I've created weight on all my variables. I'd suggest you do the same depending on how you're building this approach out. Um, and again, you can play with advanced search too. Uh, you sort of learn some things when you're, you're doing this. Less variables is more friendly in terms of returning uh, results. If you put feed too much into a search engine, it will, it will give you crummy results. So try two or three at a time out of your seat. So what you can expect to harvest from LinkedIn, um, relevant skill and probability match percentage achieves an initial targeting accuracy score. Um, geolocation, where the Swift infrastructure is located. Um, this is important because you will know where the treasury team is. Um, and, and also, you can use this same data to de-anonymize targets. So the people that had good OPSEC and say they weren't worked in the financial services industry, you can align up their skills and you can figure out what company they look for or they work for. So geo is also important. Another variable is where you move money to. So that's indicated by skill type, which is uh, cross-border payments, Forex, foreign exchange, things like that that are in the seed. Um, you want to know, or an adversary would want to know, how do I get the money out? How do I get it out to the point where I can, I can take it or cash it out in a casino somewhere? We're in a casino, so that's a good analogy. And that happened. So org chart mapping of relationships to, the, to targets. I've assigned a value. I've got five values um, based on title. And that, uh, that allows you to build... Um, a, f a fishing use case or a lateral movement use case or a targeting use case. Um, so external enrichment, uh, once, once you've identified or acquired your targets, uh, you know, more OSN, a Google search is really effective with a unique name. A unique name and your geographic location is super effective in targeting and that's, again, highly problematic. Um, you want to look for the, pri the primary key in, in finding breach information about somebody is their private email address, of course. Your company email address is not useful, but the Yahoo address you had, the Hotmail address you had, uh, there's a lot of pwned data sitting behind that. Um, so you find that, and then you run that against how they've been pwned for a one or zero value, um, and you create your data set based on that. So that, that'll help uh, to tell you what the bad guys have about your users. And I'm listing some of those sample data fields that are really easy to find, again, with Google search. Google's the can opener of the internet. So internal enrichment, this is the important, the most important thing for me and for us, I, I believe. Uh, this, these are the defender actions. This is what we need to do. Um, a, a great metric to have is to understand your total user base and uh, then what, what percentage
percentage of that user base were you able to discover? Uh, that's that's a metric you can start with. Um, identifying the habitual clipper or clickers, uh, you need to know who they are. Um, you need to start feeding that information into your phishing tests. Uh, you need to correlate these uh, this data with your targeted user analysis, and uh, lots of phishing simulations need to be done. Um, correlating targeted users with past breaches. You should do this. You may find something. You may connect the dots. That OPSEC equals more breaches. Um, email and spam phishing metrics. Uh, the bad guys aren't going to burn a zero day. Uh, they're going to take the simple approach. You can look for trends. You can look for the commodity approaches that will be taken against you. Um, also, targeted users are the canaries in the coal mine. They're where we want to spend our effort. Um, because they're who the adversaries know about. They're who's going to be targeted first. They have data sets to use against these folks. Let's eliminate the password uh, from the equation. Uh, of course, NFA, I'll keep saying this repeatedly in, in uh, my deck, and uh, examine the, uh, the, the password reset criteria and social engineering risks. So human honeypots and operationalizing defenses, we have the same harvest data as our adversaries. We have the same enrichment data. We know who the targets are, and we've separated the weakest links in, in our companies. Uh, so let's make it easy for the bad guys to discover these folks. And I ask myself, what would Arnold do? Let's terminate their attack strategy. Let's make it easy for the bad guys to discover the targeted users. Let's, let, let's create uh, honey creds, honey groups, honey pots, infrastructure that's easily enumerated. Let's make our jobs easier. Let's add pwn passwords to password history. You might have to dump the hashes and match them because we can't take that the pwn password in, right? Um, let's enforce multi-factor auth. We've got to do that. Let's disrupt them. Let's feed this data into our targeting phishing platforms. Let's provide more OPSEC training. I'll get into that. I've got a, a training through shaming slide in here too. Let's monitor the targets. User behavioral analysis is a, you know, a, a a new area that I think can be folded into this. And uh, let's create fake LinkedIn personas and target skills. Do this at your own peril, but it, it will work. Um, so simple correlation and, and data to model. I, I've covered most of these, and I want to blast through the deck so you get the whole thing. And, the, and get into the data harvest. So um, in my harvest, and I had to redo, I had to redo a lot of this because this project uh, started really 18, 19 months ago. 20, 223 total users were harvested with a high probability of access to Swift. Uh, seven Fortune 100 companies. 32 users is the average enumerated size of the treasury and cash management team per company. Um, users in four companies uh, leak partners. And uh, you know, it was as bad as some users saying, I have this set of skills and I move money to these, these places. I, I couldn't believe it when I looked at it. But I found it multiple times, so it became believable. Um, d domestic international leakage, that's problematic. You know, when you map that against the attack path of like the Lazarus team or Lazarus group. Um, members of anti-fraud teams were easily enumerated at three target companies. That's bad because the bad guys like to watch the watchers to make sure they haven't been caught. And we can't have that. Um, the physical location of the, t of the cash management teams, I've gone through that. Um, and again, I was able to de-anonymize those with financial services listed in profiles. Um, one potential security officer role was leaked in a profile. That's a very high level of access. Um, so I'm hoping that was a fake profile. And uh, other inter interesting points that I like to point out, and this is, this is relevant to all targeting models, if somebody does something very specific, they're going to be doing it in the next job and the job after that. This data is valuable for years. Almost two years ago, some of the people I found, they switched jobs. They've cleaned up some of their OPSEC, but it's easy to connect the dots. And you've got to think about the adversary space knowing these people and having already connected the dots. Um, so this is my shame slide. All right, uh, I'm not going to run a live demo. Uh, that looks like a career limiting move. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I think it might be the sort of thing that you want to do and, and maybe expose your users to and then explain this type of attack model to them. Um, it might be a teachable moment. It won't, you won't correct 
the past, which is already going to haunt them and us, but you might be able to correct going forward. So seed-based harvest, um, people with, I believe, a high probability of access to the target system uh, per company, these are the ones anonymized, again, uh, you want to anonymize this type of data, and then my average seed match per user, uh, some were better than others, and uh, this is pretty fun when you look at it this way. Um, Geodata via LinkedIn, um, locations, uh, 11 locations in total uh, of treasury teams, so I was able to find that in every single company. That was relatively easy. Thank you, Google. Uh, partner location and uh, Forex skill, so somebody that's leaking partners and gives you a skill that they might move money outside of the country. We got plenty of that. Um, added enrichment. I did just a few of these just to prove that it worked with how I've been pwned. Um, and I ran out of time because I had family vacation and, and uh, I was getting yelled at for spending too much time on the laptop on the sunny days <laughs> by the beach. That's what you do if you're a researcher. Um, so I, I basically proved, proved the model out with a, with a few. So operationalizing the data, as I told you, I've assigned a value for based on role and company, and I wanted to show how the spear phishing works, and I wanted to be sure to use the Hamburglar, because I find him amusing. Um, <laughs> so anyway, this is showing enumeration, uh, targeted spear phishing, um, and, and basically you can, you can generate this whole model based on the data that I got. The other thing was operationalizing the geodata, and I wanted to put something simple together showing uh, the relationships between the companies. Um, an action that I've taken from yesterday that I need to do is obviously start learning Maltigo and saving myself hours and hours of needless, <laughs> needless work, but uh, it, it was still fun because I had the Hamburglar. So um, observations based on data and industry predictions. Uh, users have poor OPSEC. We can't do anything about that. We can correct to a point, but that's all we can do. Um, I really wish LinkedIn had had the damage that Facebook had because, you know, they're not forcing security reviews on, on people to turn on those new things that have been turned on within the last two years. Um, so, you know, I, I noticed in my data set that the profiles were leaking way more geodata um, 18 months ago than they are now. So there have been some things that tweaked at the, at, at the LinkedIn level, but not at the user level. People are still leaky in terms of writing things themselves in there. Um, so I think as cryptocurrencies lose value, financial institutions will be more aggressively targeted. A uh, sure thing is always better than a volatile thing. Um, and APT adversaries with an, with an interest in uh, disrupting the global financial se system probably have collections using an approach that's way more sophisticated than what I put together with a simple uh, search engine. And low capability actors are also using this process for W2 phishing. Uh, I picked Swift over W2 phishing because when I started looking at W2 use cases against this, I was like, I can't even put this up here. Um, I thought it would have been a dangerous thing to do and, uh, and, and bad, but this certainly does work. And I think this is a primary vector of attack targeted uh, phishing for W2s. Um, so, and you can guarantee that those are low, there's a lot of low dollar environments um, with weak security protections there. So that's something we've got to work, work to. Um, so uh, this, is, this is, again, the basics. Uh, we need to predict who, who will be targeted, whether or not they're being targeted, and the likely success rates if the user is part of the attack chain. Breach data is going to continue to grow. There's nothing we can do about it. We've got to model against it in order to be effective. Um, we don't have the same weapons going into the fight as the adversaries, which is a huge problem. And I don't know what we can do about that, but uh, aside from break the rules, but we don't. We, we would not want to do that, right? Yeah. So, um, so again, I think this, this again, wh where do you focus? You focus on an achievable objective. Leadership, system administrators, financial systems, and programmers. What's, what's important to protect your company? Don't try and do your whole company. Um, you'll kill yourselves unless we, we automate some of this. Uh, so that's just to that. Um, oh, my. I got one minute, so I, I did it about right. So credit given my family. I ate up a ton of their time this summer. Troy Hunt, um, because we could do one and zero pointers as opposed to uh, trying to take a breach data and look at it. He's done a huge, huge job of, uh, of making us able to perform our jobs. And the folks that reviewed my presentation. 
Um, I've got backup slides that are going to be very uh, effective for you to go back to. I'll blast them real fast. Um, why is the job seeker the, the most likely person to click the phishing email? Um, I thought this was an important precondition. I've, I've written a graduate paper for this. I'll eventually publish it out. I think it'll be important to you. Um, the, the arguments against, I mean, I don't really think that any of them are valid unless you don't have data that's worth protecting. Um, so additional seed files that, and things that I sort of played around with, uh, W2s I think is, is actually the worst thing and the bigger problem, uh, W2 spear phishing. Um, and then I was able to time lock that I was actually looking at this almost two years ago. A friend of mine's company got hit and, uh, and I ran a, a query and I was able to pick two people that I thought for sure were the ones that got hit. Uh, that was interesting. And, I, I started looking deeper at LinkedIn, too, and uh, looking for maybe personas in there. Um, that's another talk. <laughs> and then I broke down the attack chain uh, and why, why we can prevent that attack chain from completing by using a process like this. So that's, that's it. And uh, if you guys have some questions and stuff, I think we're at the end.